Number 15 then from the 2019 Advanced Higher Maths. Nine mark question here. Three dimensional geometry. Vectors. You've got the equations of planes and the equations of lines. You're given the equations of two planes and you have to show that the line of intersection of these two planes is given by these parametric equations, just for the two marks. Well, solving that pair of equations, because at the point of intersection, both of those equations must be satisfied at the same time, so you've got simultaneous equations, but you've only got two equations and three variables. That means you're going to have a floating variable. One of them will be able to take any value, and then the other two will be tied to it. Well, you can see here which one they've chosen. They've got z as the free, the independent variable, the floater, if you like. And the other two will be tied to it. So, solving that pair of equations, you can set out a wee mini augmented matrix, if you like. You could use your Gaussian elimination, but essentially just solving a pair of equations. So, if I take... I know they've got names, I'm going to give them names again. If I take two of them and subtract one of the first one, two of two, whoops, minus number one, I'll have this. Two of them, take away that, disappears. Just the same as you would do if it was an invented matrix, two of row two minus row one. Two of them, but that'll be plus, so that's five y. Two of them is minus six, but plus one is minus five z equals four, take away nine, negative five. I'll just tidy that up. Y minus Z is negative 1. Now, that's why there's no particular solution, because you've got two variables. So you choose one to be free, and that's the one they've chosen. So we'll just say this, let Z equal lambda, because as soon as you let Z equal lambda, lambda, or have a particular value, Y is tied to it. That means that Y minus lambda is negative 1, which means Y equals lambda minus 1. There's the first one. Now go back to one of those equations. X plus, this is equation one. No, it's not, it's equation two. X plus, from which you get X is equal to, well, that's negative two, so it'll go across as two lambda. And that's negative one, so it'll go across and add to make it plus three. So part B, let pi 3 be this new plane then, and calculate the angle between the line L1 and this new plane. Well, if you've got a plane and a line comes in and hits it, the angle they want is the angle between the line and the line in the plane, like its shadow, its projection onto the plane. However, you only know how to work out angles between two vectors. So instead of that, work out the angle between the line and the normal to the plane. And the one you require will be the complement of that. So we need the two direction vectors. What's the normal vector to the plane? What's the direction vector of the line? Well, the normal direction to the plane is given by these three coefficients here. Negative two, four, three. The direction of the line is given by the coefficients of the parameter there. That is 2, 1, 1. So you could find angle phi just by using the normal scalar product. The scalar product of these two vectors will be the magnitude times the magnitude times the cosine of the angle in between. I'll put that down first of all. So it will be n dot u divided by the magnitude of n times the magnitude of u. That would give you this angle between the line and the normal to the plane, and then you can take it away from 90. Or you could simply say, well, the cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of its complement. So if you take the sine instead, if you make this the sine, that will be the angle you want. As long as it's all nice and positive. With the cosine, if it wasn't, you just put the modulus down and that would give you the acute angle. But you can see it's going to work out fine here. You've got scalar product, negative two times two, negative four, plus four, and then plus three. Magnitudes, magnitude of this one, four plus 16 plus nine, magnitude of this one, four plus one plus one. 
which means the angle you require will be inverse sine of, that comes to 3 on top, and that's root 29, root 6. And when you press the buttons, you get 13.145 and so on, which means the angle you require is 13.1 degrees. You could just have found the cosine, inverse cos, and then take it away from 90, but you'd get the same result. Part C. Line 2. So a new element joins the troop of entities here. Is the line perpendicular to pi 3, which passes through the point 1, 3, negative 2? Now you have to determine whether or not line 1 and line 2 intersect. Well, the first thing is I'll need to get the parametric equations of this line. So for this line here, now it's perpendicular to pi 3. Well, that's actually quite handy because that then means the direction vector of line 2 is going to be the same as the normal, which you had in the previous part, negative 2, 4, 3. Well, I can just construct it now. So that means the general point in this line would be start at any particular point, 1, 3, negative 2 for the position vector, and take steps, I need a parameter. That was lambda, so I could use mu. Take steps of this direction vector. So I can spell this out now. I can get the three parts to L2. Top line, x equals 1 minus 2 lambda. No, it's 2 mu. y equals 3 plus 4 mu and z equals negative 2 plus 3 mu. So there's the two lines. Parametric equations of line 1, parametric equations of line 2. Do they intersect? Well, if they intersect, these equations have to be solved simultaneously, such that the x equals the x, the y equals the y, and the z equals the z. So we just form that. If you're looking for an intersection, you have to have this thing, x's. 2 lambda plus 3 should equal 1 minus 2 mu for the x's. Lambda minus 1 should equal 3 plus 4 mu for the y's. And lambda should equal negative 2 plus 3 mu for the z's. These three have to be satisfied at the same time. It has to be the same pair of values that works for all three. If that's the case, they're consistent and you'll have a point of intersection. If it's not the case, then the lines will be skew and they'll actually miss each other. Now it's almost going to work for two, because two equations and two variables will have a solution, unless those parts happen to be parallel. I'll just rearrange that. 2 lambda plus oh, 2 mu equals negative 2. I could simplify it, but I'm just going to leave it. Lambda minus 4 mu is 4, and lambda minus 3 mu equals negative 2. There's the three equations. Are they consistent or not? If they're consistent, they intersect. If they're not consistent, they don't. Well, you can solve any pair you like. I need to check if there's a unique value of mu and lambda that works for all three. You can only do two at a time. I'll take these two and get rid of lambda. So if I do equation 3, take away equation 2. I'll have lambda minus lambda disappears. Minus 3, take away that, makes that into plus 1. And negative 2, take away 4, makes that minus 6. There's a value of mu that satisfies them. What's the corresponding value of lambda? Well, pop it into one of them. Either one, I'll just pop it into this one. That was number 2. So you've got lambda minus 4 times negative 6 is equal to 4. So lambda would be, that's 24, take it across, that's negative 20. So that should be the pair that satisfies them. Now the question is, does that satisfy number 1? Is it consistent? So put it into it. 2 times negative 20 plus 2 times negative 6, doesn't look like it at all. That's negative 40 minus 12 is negative 52. Well that certainly doesn't come to negative 2. That means the system is inconsistent. 
system is inconsistent, which means L1 does not intersect L2.